All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the final part of the show, we are now going to get into talking about all of the 2-0 teams, you know, talk about some of the surprises from the group, uh, things like that. So we'll start off with the NFC. And surprisingly, yeah, I, I mean, the group that is 2-0, it, it kind of is a surprise. Um, you know, because... You know, going into the year, I had the Lions, the 49ers, the Eagles. Those were like the top teams. Now, it's still going to most likely, you know, finish that way. Um, but, yeah, 2-0. and You got the Vikings, you got the Saints, the Buccaneers, and the Seahawks. Those are your 2-0 and teams. So who would have said that was going to happen? Um, we'll start off with, with the Vikings. They got their first win against the Giants in Week 1, which... Not overly surprised by, but this past week, you know, they really were impressive against the 49ers. This is a good roster. They're well coached. And, you know, Sam Darnold, he's played well these first couple games. And they're only going to get better because once you get Jordan Addison back, you get TJ Hawkinson back. I mean, I've said this a million times, but you get those guys back and you hope Justin Jefferson, you know, is healthy and, and, he didn't seem overly concerned over his injury, injured his quad in the game against the 49ers. But, um, you know, you get all those guys back. I mean, you know, this could be a wild card team. This could definitely be a wild card team. How the season has started off so far, you know, I, I mean, I had the Rams making the playoffs. They, they look like they're not going anywhere this year. The way the team is just dealing with a ton of injuries at the moment. Um, but I like what I'm seeing from the Vikings so far. You know, and you got Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler running the football well for them early on. And they're backed by a good defense. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with what they're doing. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that, you know, that um, I think that, I mean, you would have thought they'd be 1-1 one one playing against the 49ers. But the 49ers have not looked great so far. So, yeah, and then another surprise is the Saints, um, how they've started off. I mean, 40 points in back-to-back -back weeks. Now, against the Panthers, you know, you're like, okay, you know, the Panthers are not good. But, you know, 44 points on the Cowboys in Jerry World, you know, that was an eye-opener. And Derek Carr is playing really well to start off the year. Alvin Kamara looks like his, his old self. Um, Rashid Shahid has gotten off to a great start. So many big plays down the field with him. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, and you got that defense that, you know, they still got some veterans on that team. Cameron Jordan. You know, it... You got to like what you're seeing from the Saints so far. You know, they have carried over that momentum from last year. They have. Now, is it going to continue throughout the whole season? No. I mean, at, at some point, they are going to regress back to the mean. But... Right now... You got to like what you're seeing from them. And the Buccaneers, you know, they're 2-0. and um, You know, week one against the Commanders, you know, I had them winning that game. But against the Lions, avenging that playoff loss, you know, by going back to Detroit, you know, that was definitely a little bit of an eye-opener. I mean, the Lions right now are not playing great offensively. Well, Jared, Goff's, Jared Goff has not looked great the first two weeks. But... Yeah, I mean, you got the Saints and the Buccaneers at the top of the division. Falcons 1-1, one and one, but got to like what the Bucks are doing. And they were able to win despite all the injuries that they were dealing with, particularly on defense. So, yeah, Derek Carr and Baker Mayfield right now, they are looking really good. Baker right now to start off the year, um, he's got five touchdowns to one interception. And Derek Carr, uh, he has uh, five touchdowns to one interception as well so they both have been playing well and we'll see if they can continue that the seahawks are 2-0 they're on top of the nfc west um you know they they didn't look great in week one against the broncos but looked a little bit better against the patriots uh, in foxborough against a good defense so yeah good start for uh for mike mcdonald uh, geno smith has been okay uh, again was a little bit better uh, this past week against the pats uh, he's got a touchdown to interception ratio of two to one. Um, you know, they were without Kenneth Walker on Sunday. So, you know, once they get him back, you'll have your full arsenal of weapons once again. 
And, you know, the Seahawks have a good defense um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, I can't really say I'm surprised that the Seahawks are 2-0 based off of the schedule, but it's just kind of surprising just the teams that are 2-0 right now in the NFC. Because there's no 49ers, there's no, you know, no Rams, no Cowboys, no Eagles, no Lions or Packers. It's the Vikings, Saints, Buccaneers, and Seahawks. Now, things that, look, th this is just what the segment is. It's just talking about the 2-0 and teams. Things are going to change. You know, when we look back at this again, you know, several weeks from now, it's going to look very different. So then we go to the AFC. You got, now, th it's a little less surprising. You got the Bills at 2-0, and the Chiefs are 2-0, and the Chargers, the Texans, and the Steelers. Now, with the Chargers, based off of their schedule, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of would have expected them to be 2-0, I think. I mean, maybe they could have lost to the Raiders, but the Raiders did not look great in that game. But, um, yeah, I mean, credit to Jim Harbaugh. He's already doing wonders with that team. Um, you know, the Chargers ground game has been very efficient so far this year, and that's, you know, what... Jim Harbaugh is all about is running the football and he's got probably the best quarterback that he has you know been a head coach of in Justin Herbert so yeah I mean you got to like what they're doing so far actually what is the, what is um their rushing stats so they are actually oh so they're second in rushing yards per game they are averaging 197.5 rushing yards per game but yeah J.K. Dobbins has looked really good I mean the Joe Alt pick we talked about it I mean having him and Rashawn Slater as your two tackles I mean, that's, you know, you love that. And the Chargers' defense hasn't looked bad so far. I mean, you went up against the Raiders and the Panthers. And now you're going up against Justin Fields um, and the Steelers, and their offense hasn't looked great. So, yeah. Um, you know, good for the Chargers. Also, the Steelers, speaking of them, they're off to a 2-0 start as well. You know, Justin Fields continues to, uh, you know, manage the game. And that Steelers defense continues to play well. Chris Boswell has gotten off to a great start. Their kicker, right now they're in first place. So, um, one of these 2-0 teams will not be 2-0. They will not be undefeated unless they tie. Um, they will be playing on Sunday, so I'm looking forward to that game. And then the other teams that are 2-0, not really surprised, the Bills... Uh, the Chiefs, and the Texans. Um, the Bills have looked really good so far offensively and uh, and defensively. Um, you know, I mean, before Tua got hurt, they forced him into three interceptions. So, and Josh Allen has looked good to start off the year. James Cook as well. This could finally be the James Cook year. We saw it a little bit towards the end of last season. You know, now that three-touchdown game against the Dolphins, you know, that's got to get Bills fans and fantasy owners very excited. Um the kind of game that he had. Um, the Texans, they look really good. Interesting game coming up on Sunday in Minnesota. Texans will be going to take on the Vikings. So one of those two teams will not be undefeated by the end of that game. I have no idea who to pick in that game. I really don't. Um, that, that game is a toss-up for me. Right now I'm leaning towards the Texans, but... I don't feel great about it. I really don't. Because the Vikings are playing really good. And then, of course, you got the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 2-0. Now, many people are going to say, well, they should be 1-1. Many people could say, well, they could be 0-2. Because, you know, if Isaiah Likely, you know, keeps his, uh, you know, if, uh, if Isaiah Likely stays in bounds and they go for 2 and they get it, Chiefs lose that game. And if, you know, that pass interference call doesn't happen, Chiefs lose that game in their own, too. But they're not. They're not. That's why it's if. They are 2-0, whether you like it or not. Have they looked great? First week, they looked good offensively. Then, you know, this past week, Mahomes still, the, the, you know, the interceptions, you know, with him at times are a problem. Now, one of them, I can't really fault him because the defensive back of the Bengals made an unreal catch, an OBJ-like catch. So I can't really, like, fault Mahomes for that but you know now 
with the Chiefs, you know, we got to see what this running game is like because Isaiah Pacheco is going to be out for a while. You know, Carson Steele looks like he's going to get, you know, the work as the number one back. Um, and he impressed in the preseason. And you also got some AJP Ryan there. You brought him in to be that third down back. We'll see if Clyde Edwards Hilaire uh, is brought back in the fold at some point. Because um, he's on the non football injury uh, illness list. Um, yeah, because he's been dealing with, I, I believe, some off the field stuff. So hopefully, you know, things are better on that front. So we'll, we'll see if he's eventually brought back in. They did bring in Kareem Hunt. Uh, the former Chiefs running back. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what the Chiefs ground game is going to be. And Travis Kelsey's gotten off to a slow start. But, you know, I'm not really concerned about that. I think he's going to get it going. You know, I mean, yeah, he's getting older. But, you know, it's he, he he's going to be he's going to be he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. But, yeah, um, those are all the 2-0 teams. Uh, let me know what you guys think, though. Uh, what are you know? What what is the most surprising two and O team of the group? I'd probably say it's the Saints, honestly. Um, just because how they've performed these first couple weeks. I mean, back to back forty point games. Um, I mean, maybe you could say the Vikings also because they beat the Forty ers But you know what? The Vikings beat the Forty ers last year too. But um, yeah. That's uh that's basically it with that topic and that's basically it for the show for today. Um, I thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to check out all the other shows as well. Give the other shows some love. And um, yeah, so with that, that is all the time that we have for today. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back again tomorrow, 10:30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll be doing a lot of picks for the rest of the games for this week. Uh, we'll talk about college as well. Uh, look at some of the big matchups there. So until then, I'm Kenneth Grunfelder signing off from the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Have a good day. Enjoy the game tonight, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.